Back in 2006, when we were making the film Global Metal, I had the opportunity to travel to Israel. And I interviewed Kobe, the lead singer of Orphan Land, overlooking the old city of Jerusalem. And you know, it's hard to escape the news these days, and there's a lot of divisiveness in the world right now. And looking at this interview 11 years later makes me realize how relevant our conversation still is today. Checking microphone, one, two. Check one. Got it? Slate is up. Global Metal, Kobe interview, take one. Just uh, tell us your name, tell us where you're from, and then just tell me about, um, about the band Orphan Land, and particularly about you know, the, the philosophy of the band. My name is uh, Kobe, and I'm the vocalist of Orphan Land. Originally, I come from uh, Jaffa, which is a small city near Tel Aviv. So the band exists for 15 years, uh, started as Resurrection, a very ordinary death metal band. And then we decided that if we want to contribute something to the world and to the metal scene, we need to do something that really has something to do with the place that we come from. So uh, we changed the name of the band to Orphaned Land and uh, we changed the whole concept of the band. We started to use motives from the three religions, prayers, singings, uh, chants and stuff like that. And we started to use all kind of uh, oriental elements and uh, music instruments in our music. And at the end of the day, it created a very new style of metal music, which, is, which was never uh, known before to the metal scene, because everybody knows a Norwegian black metal or a Swedish death metal and so on. But this, this was the first time that you could actually uh, reach uh, an Israeli metal band. It seems inevitably the metal that comes out of Israel is some reflection of right. what is going on here, regardless of what side of the coin you may be on. Yeah. Uh, so do you, do you think that that's, that that's an inevitability, that coming from Israel, playing metal, that some way your music is going to reflect this place? Yeah, for sure. And, and uh, at the end of the day, we try not to take sides. I mean, we, we do reflect also Christianity and uh, Islam in our music. And at the end of the day, we chose to do uh, metal music. A lot of people don't really know what's going on around here. They, they always fed up from the news. And the news always show you if it's tanks, soldiers, wounded, and stuff like that. And on a cultural aspect, this is a very colorful place. And Orphan Land's, Orphan Land's music is definitely a reflection of, of this. Why is it important for you to take that poetic approach rather than the direct political approach? I mean, do you think it's, it's more powerful, it's more effective, or, I mean, why? It's, it's more universal. I think it's more universal, it's more abstract. The result is, is that uh, Muslim people listen to Orphan Land and Christian people and Jewish people listen to Orphan Land. This is actually the result, which is amazing. It's important not to take a clear side if you're an artist. I, I mean, if, if you want to take side, be a politician or be a politic band, and we are not a politic band. I, I personally don't like politics at all. I never voted in the elections in Israel. It's unfortunate, but I prefer to do my contribution in the musical, spiritual side of the things. And uh, the result is amazing. I mean, we created friendships with so many cultures. And, and when we played in Turkey, you could have seen in the, in the crowd Syrian people and Israeli people singing the same songs of, of the same band. So I think that once a Syrian guy and, and if an Israeli guy found a common song that they both like, then this is the first sparkle of communication between them. And they can be friends because they found something in common. So this is very much important. And we deal with the light because look, look at this darkened place. I mean, if we will think about the dark, we did nothing. There is plenty of darkness in this world. I think this is why we should speak about the light, mainly. Could you describe the Orphan Land audience and, and that unique aspect of it? I think the Orphan, Land, the Orphan Land's audience is sometimes surprised even from themselves. In an Orphan Land concert, you can actually see metalheads, but you know, with everything, with the jackets, the piercings, the tattoos, the black outfit, the morbid angel shirt. And then all of a sudden they dance like they are in some kind of a synagogue party. This is amazing actually because you, you, 
I wouldn't imagine to see it in, in the metal scene. And I wouldn't imagine to see a metalhead doing anything else except headbanging in a metal concert. So they jump, they sing with us, and they say the prayers with us, even if they consider themselves as atheistic. It doesn't matter. This is the harmony that we try to create. When we played in Turkey, uh, so you always see people in the crowd, they, they sing with us together and they do like this with their hands. Now this is what usually the Muslims are doing when they pray. It's like they are holding the Quran book. So I'm standing on stage and I'm singing and I'm seeing people singing with us and doing this with their hands. Hmm. It's amazing. Hmm. It's metal people. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is the Orphan Lands audience mm -hmm. in general. In some ways it seems as though metal is something that brings people together, that goes across you know, differences. Yes. And, but at the same time, it's always been a vehicle to express certain political views or certain um, points of view. What do you think is most important to do in metal? I think I cannot give you a straight answer because it's, it's very much dependable on where you come from. I know bands that sing only about uh, drinking beer and uh, being trolls and stuff like that. And uh, coming from a very complicated place like we come from, I think it's very much important to reflect the reality that we live in. Though we still can sing about beer and stuff like that, but I think it's... I think metal is about doing whatever you want. If you want to combine Judaism in your metal, go ahead and do it. If you want to combine beers and trolls and Vikings in your metal, go ahead and do it. I think the metal community is, is some kind of... Metal is some kind of a religion, in my opinion. I mean, just look at the outfits of the metal people. You can identify them, same as you can identify a Hasidic guy or a Muslim guy. You can identify a metalhead. I don't, I don't know if you can identify uh, a jazz lover or... Uh, I don't know folk music lover or, or dance music lover, the way that you can identify a metal head. And this is, this is the most beautiful thing about metal. It's very open-minded, though we look very strict. The way that we dress, the things that we sing about, we always shout to the microphone. But at the end of the day, we are the greatest people in the world, in my opinion. I mean, there's an odd contradiction in that, though, because so much of metal is anti-religious. Right. So, like, so a lot of it, right? You think right. about the history of metal. Maybe 99%. Exactly. Yeah. And yet, you're saying it is religious. So, is that a contradiction? It is. Because you can be anti-religious, but just look at yourself. You are a religion. Metal is a religion. Yeah. The outfits, the habits, you've been to Vakken. It's Mecca. They all come there and worship metal. They buy the merchandise, they buy the CDs, they had back in the concerts. That's what it is. So you can be anti-religious, but maybe metal is some kind of a new religion.